They weren't supposed to take all that stuff. They were only supposed to take bones of scientific value, and and they were supposed to research every one they took, and they're supposed to under the agreement I had with them, or my my company, do a report annually on everything they took, and it was a tripartite agreement with the University of Alaska, AM and H, and my company Fairbanks Exploration, and they didn't do any of it. And when I bought the company, I went to the University Museum, and the curator there, I said, I bet you know why I'm here. He goes, I think I do. I said, I want the bones back. He goes, let's go to New York City. Let's go get them. So we all went to New York City to get them. And they gave me a nice tour downstairs of the, of the basement, and showed me the tons and tons they had done there. Hundreds and hundreds of mammoth tusks. Really? In those crate, the wooden crates and everything else. And what are they doing with them? Nothing. They're supposed to re do reports and research on them. They haven't done anything in a hundred years. So is it because they don't have the funding to do the work on them, because and they just want to store them because they're pack rats? Like what? What are they doing? Well, they don't have they don't have the stratigraphic information about where that stuff comes from. Oh, you and have that. I have all of that. Yeah. And one of the authors of that report I read last year uh, was trying to get us together. So we could make some sense out of this collection. And like Drew and I were talking earlier, it's like a thousand piece jigsaw puzzle. I only got 20 pieces. I want the whole thing on the table and we'll research all of it. Because the secrets to the extinction event are in those bones. Yeah, it seems like it. It is. Well, let's, let's talk about that because one of the things that you have found is uh, a layer of carbon a layer of uh, dark carbon that seems to indicate a, a mass fire. Yes. And that where your the animals are, it's, it's so unusual that there are so many bones in this same sort of layer that exist in one place. Yeah. That something had to happen for them to all die in that one spot. And this is something that Randall Carlson has pointed out before. Um, you know, they found... The other places were, uh, I forget where the other places were. Was it Siberia where they found m massive amounts of mammoths that were all in one area that seemed to have died instantaneously? Some of them with like broken leg bones that seemed to have died because of an impact or the the uh, the force of the impact. But like I told you last time, I think it's all secondary deposition from water mm. that because there's such a wide spectrum of them and very few mummified remains, although mm. we found some this summer. Um, and I think I told you last year that the oldest sample we took was 22,000 years old. And some people, you know, I, I have that Ice Age fossil works by little shards of ivory. And I told the one guy, I said, why don't you carbon date it if you want to know the story. So he sent it off to a lab and had it carbon dated, 40,000 years old. Wow. So, so there might be enough in there for two driest events. Mmm. Which is probably likely. Could have. Yeah. What, well, what Randall and Graham Hancock, what they believe and the Younger Dryas Impact Theory proponents believe is that d distinctly something around 11,800 years ago and then maybe something also around 10,000 years ago. But that doesn't preclude or th that doesn't dismiss the idea that there could have been one 30,000 years, 40,000 years. There could have been multiple yep. events. Could have been. Because of this time that we pass through this comet shower, it's every June and November, I believe. And I've I've posted that picture before of the burnt bedrock mm -hmm. and the gravel above it. Yes, see if you can find that photo, Jamie, because that's fascinating <coughs> too. Because that yep. that seems to indicate that something massive happened. Something did happen. Yeah. And the problem with this deposit now, I got to be careful what I say after last time. What would you do? When I was here with you last time. Did you get crazy? What'd you say? <laughs> I'm afraid I bullshitted you a little bit. <laughs> In what way? Because when I got back to Fairbanks, my surveyor comes up to me. His name's Albert. He says, you got a lot of nerve bullshitting him like that. I said, what are you talking about? He said, you told him the site that you dug all these up is five acres. I said, yeah. He goes, it's 2.1 acres. Oh. Okay, I'm going to. Tell him I'm sorry. So, Joe, <laughs> it's I even small. Well, that's, I, I, I apologize. That's actually even more insane, right? 
So do you, you, you think that this is like the water had washed these bodies into a very specific area? I, I, think, I think there's a, a bigger system of water in play that we don't really understand yet. When, when we started the, going up the gulch, it's what it is is a gulch. And it's, it's about, well, the way I can describe it, it's sure is narrow, but it sure is long. So this year we decided, let's go back to the beginning. And we moved the pump and everything back down to where we started 15, 16 years ago. Thinking, okay, let's see how wide this is. As soon as we started doing it, we started finding more tusks, wow. more animal parts, more of everything. And we found those crazy sawed bones. Yeah, the crazy sawed bones are very interesting. Yeah. So let's talk about that because we've, we've showed photos on the podcast before. Um, and that these sawed bones, now you have carbon dated them and they're to when? Here they are. Yeah. You're not going to believe this because we got all excited when we found them. Yeah. Plus or minus 200 years. Or 190 years. So what, what kind of animal are these from? I don't know. But they're 200 years old. 190. Here, I brought one with me. Oh, really? This is uh, the story about how these were found is I got a call one day. I was out there at the boneyard. My daughters have a tourist business around the corner a little bit called Gold Daughters. And Elora called me up and goes, Dad, there's a state trooper over here wanting to talk to you. And I look around my truck to see what I got in it. <laughs> <laughs> I said, okay, I'll be right over. I go over. And we had some stuff going on at the time. And I didn't think there was any reports filed any place. But I go over there and introduce myself to this guy, and it's, his name's Eric Spitzer. He's the head state trooper in Fairbanks. He says, I was just out in the neighborhood. I, I wanted to come by and introduce myself. I saw you on Joe Rogan's podcast. I love fossils. I love what this is all about is my kids like to look for bones and I take them out in the woods and we look for stuff and I just wanted to come by and introduce myself and he, the, the excitement in is just him t talking to me I said uh, well follow me over we'll go I'll go show it to you right now so he went over to the boneyard he got out and he looked around and he just couldn't believe it he picked up some bone parts I said well now you're a boner <laughs> you just, just got to find one. And uh, we bullshit a little bit. He goes, do you mind if I bring my kids out sometime? I said, bring them out this weekend. We'll fire the pumps up. I'll turn you guys loose, and then we'll come check on you once in a while. I overdo kindness. I know that most of us try to find this. But your love, it stains. It's stuck in my veins. Ah, your love is in my veins. You give me pain. Stuck in my veins I bleed love Please don't hurt my trust You know you're All I need, I lost Just you can't bruise my body no